Welcome back to part two of my coastal environment videos from today. In part one, I went through coastal processes, characteristics, and landforms. So if you want to go and refresh yourselves of all those different concepts, then go back and check out that video from the playlist. Now, here are the main types of coastal management strategies you need to know for this course. You're going to know the difference between hard engineering and soft engineering strategies. You're also going to look at a managed retreat example, as well as applying all this information about all the different strategies to an actual case study. My groups have looked at Lyme Regis. So what are actually some of the differences between hard engineering strategies and soft engineering? Hard engineering uses artificial structures to control natural processes while soft engineering uses less intrusive and more environmentally friendly strategies to manage the coastal environment. Managed retreat uses a combination of the two strategies to allow and control certain types of erosion and retreat of the coastline. So here are the four main types of hard engineering strategies you need to be aware of. Starting off with sea walls, and they provide a hard barrier against the sea and this is really important to protect areas such as towns. They're fairly expensive, but they have provide a long lasting barrier against the sea. Rock armor is more cost effective than sea walls. It looks more natural, but it still absorbs the energy. Gabions are wire cages filled with rocks. These are fairly cheap, fairly flexible. They last for about five to 10 years. And lastly, groins, which are usually made out of timber or rock, and their main purpose is to reduce the effects of longshore drift. Soft engineering strategies, which again usually provides a more environmentally friendly strategy. We've got beach nourishment, which replenishes the sand and shingle and puts it back onto the beach. We've got dune regeneration, which involves planting of marron grass and fences to maintain the dunes, which naturally protect the coastline. And lastly, we've got dune fencing, and this helps encourage new sand dune formation. Managed retreat is a more sustainable option by allowing natural processes to take place in a controlled and strategic manner. The Medmerry Managed Retreat case study is an excellent example of this and I've provided some links in the description for further information. So here are just some of the highlights of this Medmerry Managed Retreat example from 2013. To start with, the value of the land was fairly low because there was no important towns or settlements or businesses there. The whole scheme cost around about £28 million and it saw a controlled breach of the old sea defence which then flooded the farmland. This created a large salt marsh which formed a buffer between the coastline and the rest of the land. And they also established a wildlife habitat to encourage visitors to the area. It's also important to have a good case study where you see a lot of these different strategies being employed. Now my pupils have looked at the Lyme Regis case study in Dorset and this is a popular tourist destination and they've been working on developing their coastal management strategies for years. So this is not just a quick fix. Phase one started in 1990 and they've gone through various different phases. If you look at this picture, you can see all the various different types of coastal management strategies all being used in a very small space. So we've got a sea wall protecting um, the houses and the businesses. We've got the groins there to reduce the effects of longshore drift and so therefore people are going to want to come back to the beaches. And we also see some rock armour in the top right corner of the page, again providing a different cheaper alternative to protect those houses and businesses. There are various positives and negatives to these schemes in Lyme Regis. Some of the positives included an increase in tourism and more protection for the harbour but some of the negatives have influenced the amount of traffic congestion we see in the area. It might have spoiled some of the natural beauty and it may affect different areas along the coastline. That completes the coastal environment section of the course. There's a lot of information summarized in these two videos, so you need to go back and look over your notes and previous work again. For more information on coastal processes, again, I recommend checking out timeforgeography.co.uk and they provide some excellent examples. Thanks for watching, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Coming up next will be river environments.